you are joining me on Facebook Live. I'm thrilled that you are here. Let me bring in our Amazon folks. Just opening this up, Dallas, right on cue. There you are. All right. And hang on one second, Dallas. All right, there and there and there. I'm coming, baby. I'm coming. All right. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming. Okay. All right. And welcome if you are joining us on Amazon Live as well. Good afternoon. My name is Leah Little. I'm here with you every day at 12 o'clock Eastern time to do a book review. This is my way of growing and learning and giving back, and hopefully it will help you or motivate you along the way as well. So at the beginning of the year, I was looking for a way to um, give back, do something that would, excuse me, make me accountable. And uh I thought, okay, what, what can I talk about? I've talked about everything from electronics to jewelry to you know so many different forms of products for sale. And what I love talking about is ideas, big ideas. So it dawned on me the way to do that is to talk about books because books are all about ideas. So every day at noon, I'm here with you with a book review about big ideas, whether it's in business or whether it's in motivation or a combination of the two, like Thrive Today by Ariana Huffington. I've just um, come to appreciate so many amazing minds of our time. Um, of course, Ar Ariana, Tim Ferriss, uh, so many authors that just, uh, Wayne Dyer, my um, most amazing favorite uh, author who's probably influenced my life more than anyone other than Tony Robbins. So this, these are the things that I love talking about. So that's why I'm here. And uh, let's get right to it. So Thrive by Ariana Huffington. It is redefining what it means to be successful. And when I first came across this book, it was given to me by good friend, Sean Diddy, my friend in uh, the world of home shopping. She uh, left it for me when she came to visit one time. And uh, I never really worked my way through the entire book. Uh, and so I thought, okay, we're going to add it to this year's list of things. So uh, what I can say, the first time I flipped through it, and then last night today, when I was reading it, I am... Um, blown away by the amount of content and information and layers that she weaves together through examples, through um, a circumstance, through quotes from everyone from <laughs> Carrie Bradshaw in Sex in the City to Rumi. She has a, an amazing way of seeing things. And I appreciate that in so many of Ariana Huffington's work. So Thrive is about um, Slowing down, not being so fast. Uh, obviously, this was before all of the uh, pandemic. And I think the tools that she talks about and the concepts that she talks about are even more important now than they were even a few short years ago when this book first came out. So she talks about in the beginning um, sort of uh, four pillars of what she thinks we need to move toward. And this is after she had a um, sort of tragic health concern couple of them actually that she cites in the books. So she talks about well-being, wisdom, wonder, and giving. Those are the four pillars that she talks about of what she thinks we need to move toward versus just um, being busy and creating more and building big business. But it's about self-care, which there couldn't be a time, I think, more than right now that we've come to appreciate that, right? January for so many of us was self-care month. We continue that theme, excuse me, as we move on into Feb February as well. <laughs> I just had a little hummus. I think I have a little chickpea in my throat. All right, <laughs> let's get to it. This is little Dallas, by the way. Say hello there. He leaves me alone all morning unless I'm leaving to take Victoria to work or Darren is leaving for work at the gym or until I start talking. So he's going to hang out with us for a little while. All right. She says more people are coming to realize that there's more to life than climbing the ladder, that we are more than our resumes and that we don't have to buy into the collective delusion that burnout is the necessary price that we must pay for success. Oh, I love that. Whenever I go, 
I see the same hunger to live our lives with more meaning and purpose, more happiness, more joy, and less unnecessary stress and burnout. Uh, she talks about how many people talk about how they're stressed, how they're burned out. Every day brings fresh scientific findings on the benefits of meditation and mindfulness and on the dizzying array of harmful effects of stress and how integral sleep is to every facet of our lives. Now, I have to say there's been a lot more conversation about this, of course, lately, um, but it's so interesting right, that a few short years ago, she had this epiphany, like, we need to slow down. She says, even when you do a, a search, why am I, <laughs> and Google fill in the, 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 uh, the search uh, suggestion, so tired. Why am I so tired? <laughs> so she says it's uh, sort of the zeitgeist, zeitgeist of uh, perfectly captured. All right. So. She says, many warnings come in such dangerous guises, heart attacks, depression, high blood pressure, and anxiety, and then technology has made it even uh, harder to find our inner creativity and our wisdom. Isn't that so true? She says, because that capacity to go deep, to be alone with ourselves is so essential to our creativity, it's become a much more valuable skill worth far more than a productivity app, even though she has one. <laughs> Um, cleared in uh, a cleared uh, out inbox or a rigidly efficient schedule. She says, um, Eric Barker, who studies human behavior affects create how, how human behavior affects creativity wrote those who can sit in a chair undistracted for hours, mastering subjects and creating things will rule the world. Well, the rest of us frantically and fruit, fr fr Utily, try to keep up with text, tweets, and other incessant interruptions. Isn't that so true? I think to um, Seth Godin, who says children need to learn two things in school, how to uh, build team, uh, leadership skills and how to solve complex problems. Uh, he says how to sit in a chair undistracted for hours, mastering subjects, creating things. They will rule the world. All right. What we're beginning to recognize now is that success is not always about doing more but about doing better. And we do better when we're connected to our inner wisdom, our strength, in my favorite word, intuition. I love that, my favorite. <laughs> so let's, let's dive right in, shall we? So again, we're talking about four pillars that she sees as the, the next movement of what she would love to see um, come to fruition. So I want to just take a moment and say hello, whether you're joining me on Facebook, whether you're joining me on YouTube, whether you are joining me on uh, Amazon Live. I just want to say hello and do my little check-in here. So, so I can start the chats up for you as well. All right. Let me just log on here and say hello in our chat room on Amazon Live. So we're talking about Ariana Huffington's Thrive. And I just want to check on to our community and say hello. So sometimes multitasking here. I like to do this myself. Of course, uh, Kasha and Julia are oftentimes here with me, but uh, I like to answer and spend time directly if I, if I can at all. So I want to say thank you for being here. Love this. All right. And I love that our YouTube audience is growing too. Thank you so much for being here if you're joining me on YouTube. All right. So as we dive into the four pillars she talks about, she says, we, to live the lives we truly want and deserve, and not just the lives we settle for, we need a third matrix, a third measure of success that goes beyond the two metrics of money and power and consists of four pillars of well-being, wisdom, one, wonder, I love wonder, and giving. These four pillars will make up the four sections of this book. And then she goes down to, you know, talk about just, just cite the importance of it through uh, the growth of diabetes and what's happening with heart diseases and um, that people aren't getting enough sleep and how many studies. I mean, we know these things, right? This is common um, information that's coming to us. 
She says, it's not just decision-making and cognitive functions that take a hit. Even traits that we associate with our core personality and values are affected by too little sleep. Uh, she cites uh, a study by the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research that sleep deprivation reduces our emotional intelligence, self-regard, assertiveness, sense of independence, empathy toward others, and the quality of our interpersonal relationships, positive thinking, and impulse control. That's a lot, right? Because we want to take a nap. <laughs> that's a lot. So again, that's all uh, affected by the quality of our sleep. So uh, again, I see so many people jumping onto Amazon Live. I want to say thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you spending part of your day with me, and hopefully I can motivate you through Thrive by Ariana Huffington. If you're joining on Facebook or you're joining on YouTube, I'll put the links for you in the comments as well if you'd like to pick up this book. All right, when we include our own well-being in our definition of success, another thing that changes is our relationship with time. Oh, I'm so curious about this. This came up yesterday in the big leap that we were talking about, which by the way, the books that I have reviewed, uh, I think I can put up to 40 of them in the carousel on Amazon, but I've been reviewing a book a day, every day since January 1st. And the big leap um, sparked my interest because he talks about Einstein time, about having a redefined sort of sense of time. And she refers to it in this book as well, that we uh, redefine our relationship with time. So I have a feeling I'm going to be on a quest for <laughs> books of that sort in the not too distant future. By the way, I'd love your suggestions if you do have anything along those lines. She says, the third metric, wonder our sense of delight in the mysteries of the universe. How are you doing, Dallas? Okay, there. Uh, as well as the everyday occurrences of small miracles fill our lives. She talks about her mother quite a bit in this book, but she says her mother was at a constant state of wonder at the world around her, whether she was washing dishes or feeding seagulls at the beach or re reprimanding overworking businessmen. She maintained her sense of wonder at life. I love that. She says, whether I would be complaining or upset about something in my own life, my mother had the same advice. Darling, just change the channel. I love this. Darling, just change the channel. You are in control of the clicker. <laughs> Don't replay the bad, scary movies. Oh, love it. This is a conversation I have with my, my daughter so often. What comes in goes out. Fill yourself with goodness. So um, she says, it's no surprise, it's been harder than ever to tap our inner wisdom because in order to do so, we have to disconnect from our, all of our omnipresent devices, right? Our gadgets, our screens, our social media, and reconnect with ourselves. And this book is all about giving you permission to do exactly that and giving you reasons <laughs> to do exact motivation to do that too. I'm convinced of two fundamental truths about human beings. The first is that we have within within us a centered place of wisdom, harmony, and strength. Love that. This is a truth that all of the world's philosophies and religions, whether Christianity, Islam, Judaism, or Buddhism, acknowledge in one form or another. The kingdom of God is within you, she says. Or, as Akamendi says, uh, give me a place to stand and I will move the world, reaching back to uh, Greek philosophy. The second truth is that we're all going to veer away from that place again and again. That's the nature of life. In fact, we may be off course more than we are on course. I <laughs> think about Atomic Habits by uh, James Clear. I think about um, Stephen Covey's work with um, uh, the seven habits of highly effective people, how we're going to be off course um, so much of the time, but you have to know where it is that you're going, right? The question is how quickly we can get back to that centered place of wisdom, of harmony and strength. And it's in the sacred place that life is transformed from struggle to grace. And we are suddenly filled with trust, whatever our obstacles, challenges, or disappointments. And then she goes on to uh, quote that famous quote from Steve Jobs about how we can only uh, connect the dots when we look back on our lives. And I find that to be the case so many times, times that I've been frustrated or times that I felt a sense of change coming and um, 
I'm just so grateful to learn to start trusting that sense of change, right? And start trusting that that is all going to work together. So she says, uh, as Rumi put it, everything is rigged in our favor. Or as uh, yesterday, I think it was uh, talking about Gabby Bernstein, the universe is conspiring for you. The universe has your back, she says, as she paraphrases uh, the audiobook that we talked about yesterday. Love it. So again, as Rumi put it, everything is rigged in our favor. So she goes on then to talk about um, how important it is. It depends on how we practice and how important we make it in our lives. All right. As she moves on, she talks about well-being, wisdom, and wonder. The last element, the first metric to the third metric of success is the willingness to give of ourselves. And so on the final chapter of the book, she talks uh, most about empathy and compassion and giving back and how important that is that leads us to like the quest for happiness is actually found in the giving to others. And that's where the, the true joy comes, uh, paraphrasing as she says it. So it says that happiness comes from feeling good by doing good. There you go. Happiness comes from feeling good by doing good. Love that. It's so true. I mean, even just doing these book re reviews it brings me such uh, joy of um, just talking about good things, kind of reinforcing myself those good things as I'm sharing them with you. And then also to see comments and to see people joining. And it's just such a, so exciting for me to um, be able to share in this way and to have you join me and uh, be uh, here as well. I just looking again, I wanna say thank you as you are joining me here on Facebook as you're joining me uh, on YouTube. And also, uh, if you're joining on Amazon Live, I put this in the carousel. I'll make sure I have highlighted it for you in the carousel. Uh, Ariana Huffington's, there you go, Thrive. All right, so as we move forward in the book, she talks about one reason we give for allowing stress to build up in our lives is that we don't have time to take care of ourselves. We're too busy chasing a phenomenon, uh, a phantom of the successful life. The difference between what success looks like and what truly makes us thrive isn't always clear as we're living our lives, but it becomes much more obvious in the rear view mirror. Isn't that so true? So let's talk about well-being first. She says, uh, just to conclude, the old adage that we should live every day as if it was our last usually means that we shouldn't wait until death is imminent to begin prioritizing things that really matter. This book is designed to help us move from knowing what to do to actually doing it, right? <laughs> okay, let's get to it. Well-being. So there's a beautiful quote here from uh, uh, Alfred de Souza. A long time ago, it seemed to me that life was about to begin real life, but there was always some obstacle in the way, something to, to be gotten through first, some unfinished business, time still to be served, a debt to be paid. Then life would begin. At last, it dawned on me that these obstacles were my very life. Beautiful. All right, Socrates says, the unexamined life is not worth living, one of my favorite quotes. One current notion of success in which we drive ourselves into the ground, if not the grave, is in which working to the point of exhaustion and burnout is considered a badge of honor. Isn't that so true? How are you? I'm busy. <laughs> like, right? And suddenly that's supposed to be a, a good thing. The first woman's revolution uh, she talks about was, re uh, was led by the suffragists. And then she talks about the second women's revolution uh, born by the you know, right to vote and Gloria Steinem. She says, uh, Steinem, excuse me. And then she talks now about this next resolution. She says the second one is still very much in progress. And uh, simply can't wait any longer for the third revolution to get underway. She says that's because women are paying even a higher price, she says, than men for their participation in a work culture fueled by sl uh, stress, sleep deprivation, and burnout. 
So she elaborates on that with uh, different case studies, lots of statistics, again, in the beautiful way that Ariana Huffington works. She's, there's so much substance behind the messages and substantiation behind the messages, which I just love. What produces stress in our bodies is deeply subjective. It's as if stress is floating around looking for something or someone to land on. And then another beautiful quote by William James, the greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. Full, full of these just beautiful nuggets of information. Healthy employees, healthy bottom line. She talks about this from a business standpoint. Of course, it just makes sense, right? That if uh, employees are healthier, then then we will all be healthier. She talks about meditation, how it's not just for enlightenment anymore, but it's for all of us, which is super cool. And then she goes on talking about uh, electronics. There's quite a bit about electronics in this book. Um, she says, my, sc my screensaver is a picture of gazelles. She says, they're my role models. They run and flee when there's danger, like a leopard or a lion approaching. But as soon as the danger passes, they stop and go back to grazing gracefully without a care in the world. Isn't that nice? Again, a gazelle is her. Uh, it sounds like it may be her spirit animal, if I were to paraphrase. She talks about overconnectivity, uh, the snake in our digital garden of Eden, and getting out uh, statistics, which I'm sure now are outdated, but uh, and probably much, much higher. Uh, the average smartphone user checking his uh, her device, his or her device, um, checking their phones about 150 times a day. Of course, this is a few years ago when this book was written. She talks about um, up to 28% of the time an employee has or checking emails throughout or 11 hours a week checking emails. Crazy. Secure your own mask first. So she talks about meditation, yoga, mindfulness, napping, and deep breathing. Once, in, once upon a time may have been thought of as new agey, alternative, or part of a counter culture. But in the past few years, we've reached a tipping point as more and more people realize that stress reduction and mindfulness are only about harmonic uh, harmonic con convergence and universal love. They're also about increased well-being and better performance, the practicality of it all. And she goes on to argue for that. Then she goes on to uh, talk quite a bit about sleep, which I thought was really fascinating. Sleep is the most underrated health habit, according to Dr. Michael Rosen from the uh, Cleveland Clinic. She says our creativity, ingenuity, confidence, leadership, and decision-making can all be enhanced simply by getting enough sleep. I love it. Go take a nap. <laughs> um, even Michael McConaughey talks uh, about, I just recently reviewed his book too, The Green Lights. Love that. You've got to listen to the audio, audio version. He talks about getting nine and a half hours of sleep. That's a lot of sleep, right? And I think he says his wife gets seven hours, but she's like, no, you stay here and sleep because I don't want to deal with the Matthew McConaughey that doesn't get his full nine and a half hours. <laughs> I love it. All right. So talking again about the importance of sleep, walk this way. She talks about walking and moving, taking those small breaks throughout the day. Start by getting just 30 minutes more sleep than you're getting now. Then move your body, walk, run, stretch, do yoga, dance, just move anything. Introduce five minutes of meditation into your day. Pow, just that'll make a difference, right? She says, perhaps uh, again, when we reexamine what we really want, and realize that everything happens in our lives. Every misfortune, every slight, every loss, also every joy, every surprise, every happy accident is a teacher. And life is our giant classroom. That's the foundation, she says, of wisdom. Love it. She says, perhaps all of the dragons in our life are princesses who are only waiting to see us once beautiful and brave. I love that. So then she goes on to quote Marcus Aurelius. I mean, so many beautiful quotes. Here's another one by <laughs> Carrie Fisher. Resentment is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. All right. As we move forward, the uh, 17th century French mathematician and philosopher Pascal said that all of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. Mm, nothing I enjoy more than that alone time. 
So true. All right. So moving forward, now we are moving into the wisdom portion of her of her book here. She says, what we need, said Cohen, is wisdom because information does not equal knowledge and knowledge does not equal understanding and understanding does not equal wisdom. So she talks about how to get toward wisdom. It turns out that not surprisingly, mastering the art of slowing down doesn't happen quickly. Learning the wisdom of slowing down, of truly living is a journey, but it's also a prescription for better health. I love that. It's like she's saying, here's your, here's your permission. <laughs> here's your permission for slowing down. Uh, our culture is obsessed with time. It's our personal deficit crisis. We always think we're saving time, yet we feel like we never have enough of it. And in order to manage this, or what we delude ourselves into thinking of as managing time, is that we rigidly schedule ourselves on to the next, on to the next, right? Like airlines, we're routinely overbooking and fearful of unused capacity. And under the illusion of saving time, it's actually a very costly way to live, she says. I love it. So learning of wisdom. Those at the top of the uh, income spectrum, she says, are among the most likely to be time poor. And then another fantastic quote. She says, "Future the future will belong to those who can innovate. And innovation comes from knowing when to slow down the words of Carl Hunter on honor, 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 probably honor, a looks like it's French. Every, every change, everything changed the day she figured out there was exactly enough time for all of the important things in her life. Another quote, this one by Brian Andreas. Love it. Uh, uh, another quote, Bra Carrie Brach Bradshaw. After all, computers crash, people die, relationships fall apart. The best we can do is breathe and reboot. <laughs> Carrie Bradshaw from Sex in the City. I <laughs> love it. Fictional character. Okay. Then she goes on to talk about wonder and how do you get to wonder? She says the easiest way is through art and through nature. I would add to that personally, children. There's just a joy and a wonder that comes from hanging out with children of all ages, whether it's my almost 12 year old or uh, Kate, my friend who came over yesterday with her sweet little six month old baby. Oh, just warms my heart. Um, then she talks about uh, Elon Musk, the founder of Tesla and SpaceX, who is uh, intent on colonizing Mars, has also given expression to another age old human yearning. I came to the conclusion that we should aspire to increase the scope and scale of human consciousness in order to better understand what questions to ask. Really, the only thing that makes sense to strive for is greater collective enlightenment. Wow. Ah. But there is no collective enlightenment without personal enlightenment. And spiritual teachers, poets, and songwriters alike have in so many ways through so many centuries told us that unconditional loving is both at the heart of human mystery and the only bridge from our sac sacred inner world to the frenetic outer world. Nature and art, two of the most fertile grounds for experiencing wonder, love, the idea of wonder. And she goes on to talk about coincidences, life's secret door to wonder. Do you ever wonder about coincidences? Just such a really interesting, interesting thing. I just find it fascinating. That's Jim, my hairdresser, calling to say, get over here. Jim, I'll be there soon. <laughs> Managing time. All right. Another example came from Paul Grashen, who recounted a story about the day he was considering becoming more serious with his girlfriend, Esther. This is a fantastic story about um, coincidence. He was thinking about it while buying a sandwich at the deli. As he pulled out his money to pay, he noticed the name Esther was written on a bill, so he kept it. He then framed it and gave it to her. She was taken aback but didn't say much at the time. Years later, when they're married and moved into a new apartment, she unpacked it and revealed to him why she reacted like she did. When she was 19 and unhappily dating somebody, 
I just thought, how do people know when the right person is that they're meant to be with? She said, recounting time. I said, you know what? I'm going to not worry about that right now. I'm just going to write my name on this dollar bill. It was years younger when she was 19. And, and the right person is going to show up. How, how do I know when the right person is meant to, who I'm meant to be with? She said, you know what? I'm, going, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to put my name on this dollar bill. And the guy that gets this dollar bill is going to be the guy that asked me to marry him. And I knew that we were going to be married the day that you gave me the dollar bill. The reason she didn't tell him at the time is because she didn't want to freak this guy out <laughs> by raising the idea of marriage too soon. How crazy is that? Eight years beforehand. Oh, I just get chills. Anyway, she cites many, many more coincidence, uh, coincidences. All right. Then she goes on to talk about uh, the concept of simultaneity is especially interesting. By making us rethink the linear nature of time, it actually nudges us closer to how physicists describe time with past, present, and future laid out together. So coincidences can be thought of those moments when the invisible threads connecting and binding that timescape become momentarily invisible or vis visible instead of invisible, become momentarily visible. Wow. All right. And then she goes on to talk about, of course, uh, as we move through life, various stages, uh, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, she cites her stages of grieving. And then she moves on to talk about giving. And that's where the joy, that's where the happiness comes from. Well-being, wisdom, wonder, all are critical to redefining success and thriving. But they're incomplete without the fourth element of the third metric, giving. Giving, loving, caring, empathy, and compassion, going beyond ourselves and stepping out of our comfort zone to serve others. This is the only viable answer to the multitude of problems the world is facing. I love it. Probably no better place to stop than here. Finally, she says on page 228, it shouldn't take a natural disaster for us to tap into our natural humanity. She talks about how go-getters are good, but go-givers are better. So I'll leave you with that. Go, go give them. <laughs> how about that one? So that is Thrive. Quick little summary and insights from uh, Ariana Huffington, my take. And I hope this has inspired you in some way. I'm going to say thank you for joining me here on Facebook Live, and I'm especially glad for you to join me on YouTube Live, and a special thank you to you if you're joining me on Amazon Live, and I have it highlighted in your cart if you'd like to purchase this book. I highly recommend it, um, probably more, even more salient now, relevant than it was just a few short years ago. So Thrive by Ariana Huffington. All right, go play. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow with um, more insights and, uh, and reviews. Noon Eastern. All right. See you then.